Now, this is this is the this is a good story. You'll like this one. This is a very good story about somebody who has tried to screen uh, Jeremy Corbyn. Oh, Jeremy Corbyn, the big lie uh, in Scunthorpe, um, and the obstacles that he faced were considerable. Um, and he's he's agreed to come on to the Zoom to talk about it. Dave David Oldfield, are you there? Dave Oldfield. I'm here. Can you hear me? I can. Thank you for coming on. Good picture. Good sound. I'm pleased about that. I was a bit unsure that I'd pushed all the right buttons to uh, uh, join the show, but uh, it sounds like we're we're working well. Now, um, your uh, your screening of the big lie uh, was on Friday. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. Uh, can you? Can, I mean, I, you've sent me some correspondence that you received before the the screening. Um, can you tell us what your what your role is in this in the whole uh, the whole situation in, that happened in this Scunthorpe screening here? Well, I guess uh, through Facebook, uh, you know, I saw that this film was being screened in uh, lots of cities around the country, and uh, and it's it, it, it I, I I really wanted to see if we could get a screening for our little cinema club at Gunnus Village Hall, and uh, it seems to have caused quite a kerfuffle. We got it set up. Uh, I understood there was a little bit of controversy uh, about it, which perhaps made it a, bit, a little bit more intriguing for them that didn't know anything. So I hadn't actually seen the film, uh, and uh, but wanted to show it. So I got I got in touch with uh, uh, Norman Thomas, is it, of uh, Platform Films, and asked if we could uh, get hold of uh, the film to screen it. And uh, he agreed, and uh, so we set it all up. We set it up on We Got Tickets so you could buy. It was only three quid just to go towards the expenses. And, uh, and and so it was not free, but not, uh, you know, not extortionate, if you like. And yeah. uh, off, off we went. Uh, and then probably about two weeks ago, uh, uh, I got an email from the parish council uh, saying that uh, they'd had representations from uh, the local MP, Andrew Percy. Uh, who, who was uh, horrified that a public building that's received public money was going to be used uh, to to screen such a such a film, and uh, well, I began to worry a little bit uh, about well, why have I let myself in for here? Like you know, our, our little village old charity just plods along. We do kiddies parties, you know, the occasional concert, and uh, and all sorts of community stuff, Christmas dinners for the pensioners and uh, children's Christmas parties and stuff, all sponsored by local companies. You know, we're, we're the hub of the community, if you like. And so uh, uh, then, then I got a letter from, uh, I think it was the, the, the campaign against anti-Semitism. And uh, that started to worry me. Then I was forwarded a letter from the Board of Deputies of British Jews, who sort of insinuated that uh, uh, it seemed hostile and inflammatory that I was going to show this film. And I wondered, What's going on here? You know, it's uh, it's it, 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 what what sort of film is this anyway? What happened was we uh, there's some people who couldn't come on Friday night, and we did a private showing uh, on the Monday uh, for them. About five of them, like you know, so it gave me a chance to hone the technology and get the sound right, and uh, uh, and, and and I pitched it at them, and 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 that everybody was very impressed. You know, I mean, yes, they're telling a story. No, it won't suit everybody. And I understand that some of these organisations was mentioned. Uh, well, not mentioned, but uh, there were that there was sort of it was intimated that uh, uh, that Corbyn was brought down by an orchestra, but who was in it? And I think it was Alexis, Alexis Sale that uh, was commenting like, and uh, and then they showed some pictures of different organisations which might have. Um, it, it could have been sort of suggested that may have been involved without actually saying the names. So uh, I, I suppose there was a little bit of intrigue there that if, if your organisation was named, you might well uh, uh, not be happy. And uh, But anyway, you know, we, we decided to uh, front up. And uh, to be honest, I mean, I, I felt uh, I, I felt disillusioned and uh, deeply concerned about uh, what... what uh, Keir Starmer had done to Jeremy Corbyn, being a former elected, democratically elected leader of the party, uh, just to dump him for what he said 
I believe what he said was, was, was probably right because being a former North Lincolnshire councillor, I got roped up in anti-Semitism before just by saying on a Facebook page, I'd never come across it ever. And I hadn't. And I don't know any Jewish people, but I don't know the uh, local MP is. So uh, that I understand his, 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 his frustrations that, I don't know, it's blown out of all proportions. So we had 54 people turn up on Friday and uh, I wasn't sure whether we was going to get, uh, you know, the banners and the protesters and whether the MP was going to turn up and storm the building. Uh, nothing happened. Nobody came and uh, everybody come in. They got a drink. They sat down. We played the we played the film and everybody enjoyed what they'd come to see. And so it was a choice thing, really, wasn't it? And it's about freedom of speech, you know, that uh, if it had been racialist uh, pro thing, we wouldn't have done it. You know, there was nothing racist about it. It wasn't really about religion. It was about it was about politics, internal labour politics and, and, and the bad treatment of, of uh, Jeremy Corbyn, uh, who could well have become prime minister another two weeks. You know, and I think we'd have been over the line, not by far. But anyway, uh, you know, I've now left the party uh, because of uh, uh, an internal selection sort of wrangle, which I felt I was uh, wrongly done to. And, uh, and, and I guess, uh, look, I just keep on doing what I do in the community with a, a, a socialist so, slant. Well, so how does it feel that you've done something that Glastonbury and Tollpuddle didn't have the guts to do? I mean, you, you took that these people tried to intimidate you and you just carried on. Uh, and, and, and showed the film. Hey, we've got broad shoulders in Gunners, you know, and uh, to be quite honest, uh, uh, yes, it, it, it did worry me. What worried, worried me more was, well, how, how, how are we going to get people turning up wanting to smash the place up, you know, because we're showing this film? That's what I was worried about. I mean, I even referred the letter to the police and uh, they didn't seem to make much of it. They didn't think either side was doing anything wrong. They're entitled to uh, tell me or ask me not to show it, and, uh, and we're entitled to show it if we wish. Uh, you know, nobody's doing anything illegal, and uh, it, it just seems the, 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 the religious connotations seem to have sort of jumped in, and, uh, uh, and, and it's gone totally overboard. But having said that, we might show it again. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Well, look, I'm going to bring on Dave Murray. I've I've found uh, Dave Murray at uh, Basildon. Uh, so you, maybe if you could stick on on the call, uh, Dave, you, you could talk to the other other Dave. Uh, how are you doing, Dave? Yeah. I'm doing well. Dave, meet Dave. Uh, Hi, Dave. Uh, 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 Dave number one. Dave number one uh, managed to show uh, Oh Jeremy Corbyn the big lie. Can you tell us what happened in Basildon? Well, in Basildon, um, we found out um, unofficially on Tuesday uh, and officially in writing on Thursday that the council had cancelled the booking of the venue in a public community centre, which, of course, my tax dollars uh, subsidise the uh, provision of that centre. Uh, they also pay for the security guards they called on Friday to make sure we didn't do anything untoward <laughs> outside the venue because the cancellation did stick. Um, I don't know if you want to hear the justification for our uh, ban. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm quoting here from a letter from uh, the can a council official who I won't name because uh, I don't think it's fair necessarily. We're saying, um, having considered our statutory obligations under the Equality Act, which includes a duty to have due regard to the need to foster good relations between people who share a relevant protected characteristic and persons who do not share it, the council's taken the decision to cancel your booking. I think that's very clear, don't you? Not sure. <laughs> I don't think it's very clear. To me, it's a kind of Kafkaesque thing that we've been charged with something. Uh, it's a very mealy, in my opinion, it's a very mealy mouthed way of saying they think the film is anti-Semitic, which I think everyone on this call and anyone in good faith would uh, admit that it's not an anti-Semitic film. Uh, anyone who's been paying attention knows that anti-Semitism was kind of weaponized to deal with the threat that the left posed to the British establishment. 
And do, do you do you hear that, that is linked with any organisation that that letter? Or, or... Well, it's very hard for us to know. Uh, before we found out that the uh, film was banned, we were seeing tweets from um, a group called Eye on Antisemitism, and an individual who works for the Institute for Economic Affairs, which we felt quite flattered because you know we've come to the attention of Tufton Street. We must be doing something right. Um, other than that, we don't really know. Uh, we have got a number of people who've complained to the council. We aren't taking this sitting down. We feel that our human rights are being abused at this point, that um, obviously we are, <laughs> I'm a socialist and a Marxist, and uh, I'm very well aware how the law works to foster the interests of the ruling class. But I don't allow that to disarm me. I intend to assert my rights under the law which are to freedom of thought, freedom of expression, and freedom of assembly, all of which have been violated by this decision by the local council. Um, so yeah, we're gonna pursue that both in terms of uh, protest and also in terms of the official channels. You know, every council has a complaints procedure. They are under certain legal duties to abide by the Human Rights Act, to act fairly in the way they administer their services and so on, which they've basically breached at this point. I'm not quite sure why. We can't know who complained or if anyone did. Uh, however, clearly the film is not anti-Semitic. Uh, the issues raised by are incredibly important. Um, you know, basically nobbling the, the opposition in this country, uh, making sure that, I mean, let, let's remember that in 2019, 10 million people voted for the programme of the Labour Party, it's radical, transformative program, those people, are they disenfranchised now? Are we not allowed to operate politically in public? I think that's the implication of these kind of bans. It's meant to chill uh, political action. And um, yeah, we ain't taking it lying down, both in terms of the ban on the film, but also the film was a joint project between us in the Socialist Party and the Breakthrough Party. And what we're trying to do is to bring the left together because we think that we've lost the Labour Party now and that the electoral arena is one which the left cannot absent itself from. The trade union struggle is incredibly important, but there is an electoral element to this, which is going to become clearer and clearer, especially when we find out exactly how terrible, I think it's going to be awful, the next Labour government, which I think is, it's not quite, nothing's guaranteed, but it's very likely we're going to have the most right-wing Labour government that any of us have ever seen. And we need a left alternative to that because make no mistake, the populist right are going to make hay when Keir Starmer comes in and continues the grind of austerity, the privatisation of everything. And what if it's new Labour with on steroids, as he promises, then we're looking at a bit of warmongering as well, which is incredibly dangerous. The left needs to raise its voice. Well said. Uh, now that thank you, thank you. That uh, Dave, do you want Dave Oldfield? Do you want to come back in quickly? I wanted to clarify that uh, that you mentioned uh, the film was banned at Glastonbury. I mean, their solicitors, Norman tells me, that their solicitors sat down and looked at the film and determined that it there was no anti-Semitic content in it, uh, but they still decided to ban the film, although it was shown anyway. <laughs> So uh, it appears the sponsors, it was shown at Glastonbury, I'm assured. Uh, there was pictures of the film being showed, and uh, maybe it wasn't shown with authority, but it was shown. 